Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. For those of you watching at home, welcome for joining us. Before we start our meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quotation of the week. Thank you. If you always operate from an unwavering sense of integrity, then you will always be able to chart the right path for your life. Thank you. Call the eighth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Warren? Here. I'm sorry. Boren? Here. Balk? Go ahead. Oh, excuse. Serta? Here. Gisha? Excuse. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clyunas? Here. Manny? Excuse. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Vanderweel? Here. For Hasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Clay Lewis, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Clayunas. Minutes, uh, approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Um, first on the list would be Kathy Schnur. Kathy, if you could come up to the front podium, please. And Kathy, can you give me your home address, please? Okay, it's 1030 South 9th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I came tonight to address the council about the parking situation we have near 9th and Indiana. <clears throat> I understand when Commerce Street was abandoned, that wasn't a problem because you need that for development. And South 9th Street was abandoned for a... Um, what would they call it, a pedestrian walkway. But what that did is it left our area in a bad shape as far as the parking goes. Um, when you're coming down 9th Street, cars have to do three-point turns into the Highland House and back out. We've got semis coming down the street that once they get in there, there's nowhere for them to go. They, they, they're headed right, you know, heading north. They can't go anywhere. They have to go into the Highland House and come around or try to back out onto Indiana Avenue. So that's a major concern there. The, high, the railroad property behind these properties is about 360 feet long from 9th Street to 10th Street and approximately maybe 100 feet wide. I think the city should take a look at possibly purchasing that property and making it a public parking place not just for one developer to own, so not to sell it off to any one person, but to keep it as a public parking for the residents and the visitors to the area. Um, when the Highland House was put in, they did say that they'd be good neighbors and share the parking with us. Well, then the, no, then the Highland House parking only signs went up. And I understand that because their parking lot is full with their own business. The overflow parks out onto the public streets then we have no parking for our customers. We have people parking all the way up on 12th and Indiana and walking down, which is fine in the summertime, but when the winter comes, it's gonna be a definite problem. So in order not to have any fighting or bickering in the neighborhood over parking, the area behind these properties would be the key place to have a public parking spot. And um, I know already that the title work has been ordered on these properties. They're getting the fair market values on them. And if the public, well, then someone told me that the city's not interested in owning a parking lot. Well, if that's the case, then I think it should be left up to the owners of the lots that are lots 7 through 12 on North 9th, which would be lots, well, they call it plot 12. 
We own the south ends of these plots. The railroad right of way is the north end of these plots. Then it possibly sell it back to us, the neighbors, and then maybe we can get together and put in a parking lot ourselves. But then we would have, then it would just be a big mismatch because some people own 22 feet, 33 feet, you know, 50 feet. Um, I think the only logical thing would be for the city to put it in or sell it back to us. You know, I don't know how the city would um, would look at that, but I heard that um, Steve Schmidt had approached the city also about this being a public parking spot. And I just hate to see any one developer or two developers take control over the parking, and then we'll see no parking signs being put up again. You know, everybody's intention is good in the beginning, but then when they find out they need all of it, then it leads everybody else out in the cold. I mean, the development that's going on down there is wonderful. The only concern is this parking situation. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Next would be Joanne Scribner. And Joanne, can I have your home address, please? 3 Seneca Trail, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Number one, when I was here on June 4th, I shared my Harbor Taxi work scenario of June 3rd with you. Here is my update. On Tuesday, June 26th, around 4 o'clock p.m., I received my termination of employment from Harbor Taxi. Complaints were as follows. Customer complaint about preaching your religion to them being late for work, unable to find you when you should be working, no radio contact with you, hanging a sign on dash of taxi without permission, stating that customers were not allowed to swear while you drove taxi. When asked by customers to turn your radio down or turn the station, you turned it up. Dispatchers complaining you were late for picking up time orders, not helping customers with doors or packages as stated in handbook. I don't believe that all of these complaints were true of me, or if they were true, it wasn't that I consistently did these wrong things. I did put up with a lot of swearing in the cab, including the F word, without saying anything at all to the offending customers in the year and 11 months that I did drive for Harbor Taxi. Another customer complaint listed on the back of the schedule for week July 1st through July 7th, 2007 said this, Driver telling me I can't swear in the taxi. Come on, it is a taxi and I am paying you. Does the city of Sheboygan have a code of ethics for language and behavior in taxi cabs, which is a public place? Number two, I still don't understand why the Sheboygan Fire Department should take over city ambulance service when Orange Cross has, what am I right, seven ambulances already in place in different areas of the city at the ready. Since Orange Cross is a private organization, we don't pay taxes to them, is my understanding. And we don't have to buy or lease ambulances because Orange Cross already has them. Number three, I am so glad that Sheridan Park is still a neighborhood park, not the site for the new police station. The fourth fest picnic at Sheridan Park on July 4th was awesome, fun for kids and adults, and a lot of hot dogs, snacks, and sodas were consumed by those at the picnic. Thank you, friends of Sheboygan Parks. Number four, I don't know when the Sheboygan Zoo was first established, but it was active in the 1950s, 1960s, and early 1970s. Unfortunately, the zoo had to be disbanded. My husband, Gary, and I have been to the Columbus Zoo, Miami Zoo, Indianapolis Zoo, Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, Align Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates Zoo, Minnesota Zoo in Minneapolis, Milwaukee County Zoo, Racine Zoo, free, Manitowoc Zoo, free, New Zoo in Green Bay, free, Como Park Zoo in St. Paul, free, and Sheboygan Zoo, free. Gary and Joanne Scribner would love to see a zoo in Sheboygan again. We would love to spearhead this effort along with your help and the help of many other people. Call us. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Next would be Jeff Hanson. 
Next would be Lee Montemayor. And Lee, can I have your home address, please? 1015 Logan, and that's in the city. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Mayor and council members, thank you for granting me the time to express my con concerns and views. Last council meeting of July 2nd of 07, I was very disappointed that some of our council members did not follow what they said a short three months ago. Because the department went over a budget in the past, it's not a valid reason to do it again. This is not solving the problem. You're merely passing it on for someone else to pass. <clears throat> I mean, solve Pardon me. This council needs to follow our industry's leader's model that says we do what we say and then stick to it. A 0% budget levy starts with the department head. Their leadership is needed in that department to accomplish the common goal of a no tax increase. To increase that 0% budget for one department and not another may be a reflection of ineffective leadership and favoritism and a problem that will continue to grow. This is not acceptable and I urge you to correct this. I offer my concerns and input as a constructive criticism and nothing else. My next concern, when the fire department's proposal and presentation to take over the city ambulance service, I too, like a number of other citizens, had questions regarding the taking over this task for us as a city function. My question compelled me to research this topic and the history of the ambulance service. I started my research with the history of how this service was privatized in 1989 because up until that time, the police department ran the ambulance service. In 1988, the state of Wisconsin mandated that our city ambulance be upgraded from a basic EMT to an EMTI. This meant that the city would have to educate about 63 police officers at a critical budget time. A citizen's advisory uh, referendum was held and it voted two to one to continue the ambulance service by the city. Our leaders at that time chose to privatize the service. Our police and fire departments were not prepared to handle more than basic service. To continue this service, the taxpayers of this city would have to incur the full educational cost to educate those employees. To, private, to privatize came to a great deal of discussion and debate and eventually a four-year contract for the service went to Curtis Medical Service. Curtis Company had trouble keeping his contractual obligation within the time limit set forth in the contract and the refusal by a local hospital to name a medical director to supervise the service as required by the state. This led to the cancellation of the Curtis's contract and Orange Cross was granted a 90-day contract to finish the year 1989. These contracts were later extended to 2007. The fire department and its leadership wisely upgraded their qualifications requirements so that their personnel are fully educated, experienced firefighter slash paramedic and first responders. This, ladies and gentlemen, was done without any cost to the city. This was done by natural attrition and replacement requirements. This department seems to be well prepared to take over the ambulance service in the city and provide much needed revenue for the Sheboygan taxpayer at a very low investment. The company doing the service at the present time is a 501C3 company, which means they do not pay any taxes or franchise fees, fees to the city. They are a tax exempt organization and they do not produce any revenue for our city taxpayers. The notion that the fire department will be driving a private business out of business is not accurate at all. They can continue to be a successful company working together with our fire department just as they did 
when the police department ran the city ambulance service. But they will no longer do it as a monopoly. I hope my research will, will answer the questions and concern about the ambulance service brought, being brought in house. I am convinced that this service will be a benefit to our city and I congratulate the Sheboygan Fire Department for the incentive to bring in revenues to our taxpayer citizens. The can-do the can, the can attitude of our firemen is a reflection of that department's leadership and I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. Last on the list would be Milton Storm. Milton, would you give me your home address, please? Yes, my home address is 1736 Marvin Court in the corner of Sauk Trail Road. And I've opened, owned that home for 41 years now. And my phone number is 450. No, I don't need that. <laughs> well, I am on the do call list, and I expect people to call me. There you go. Uh, you will have five minutes, sir. I'll take a roll call vote in case I go over. I want to thank the kind lady in the city clerk's office who gave me this opportunity to speak. I come here with a heavy heart and I want to, and, a, and I would say maybe a uh, sadness, a little on my computer brain. Probably that is because uh, I blame it for my own self-imposed egotism, trying to be a spiritual and motivation speaker rather than addressing one specific issue. I hate to bring up old news, but we learn from the past, we're here today, and that will decide what we do in the future. I was discussing with my twin brother here some time ago about the political climate and the diversity in Washington, D.C. He gave me a quote from Thomas Jefferson, a Democrat, and I quote, he says, he who says very little or nothing at all is nearer to the truth than he who makes mistakes, errors, and false accusations. I have here a, uh, article that appeared on the front page of the Sheboygan Press. And it's from March 10th. Oh, my bicycles. March 10th of 2006. 50 cents. This is Mayor Council asked DA to charge ex-alderman Bonet. I don't think that's even 50 cents. It's about a quarter. Sorry. This certainly was a waste of taxpayers' money. I can only sympathize with Alderman Bonet and his family and Susan Hunley, how they were so falsely and wrongly accused. Why is the leadership and some older person so uncompassionately dividing the good citizens of this community? Silence is golden. You have to earn silence. There's a time to speak and there's a time to listen. Some men and women, like myself, we do nothing but talk, although I generally try to speak. There are also some common council members here, I think, that do a lot of talking. But then there are a few young ladies who can speak better than some of us men can talk. And that happens to be my council representative, and that will require a hug. I've been a member of NAD, Neighbors Against Drugs, from their beginning. I'll be walking in the National Night Out Tuesday, August 7th. I'm very dedicated to the community policing unit. There's no need for us to roll the dice to see if we can come up with $175,000. I went to pay my water bill and I found out there was a sewer base charge. I asked them what that was for and they said that was set by the Common Council. And what did I think it's used for is for fire protection and also for the Public Works Department. Well, that gave me a brainstorm idea. There are about uh, approximately 27,000 voters here in the Sheboygan area. And about the last election, only about 7,500 voted. Well, if I uh, assessed a $30 a year fee to these voters per capita, I could generate at least about seven hundred ten thousand dollars for my community policing department. Now if a 
voter does not have a valid reason for not voting, then I would access another voluntary $5. That would give me another $70,000. Now I'm almost close to $800,000. Wait till I write that cockamamie idea in the Sheboygan Press. I think that Richard Hartman and Ernest Kepler Jr. will fire back at me. Some of the money could be used for hiring five more or ten more police officers, and that maybe might even get the people to the polls. And we could maybe even uh, hire an administrator, an accountant, that could uh, take care of these funds. Might even be some money left over so that we could give Chuck Adams a little pay raise. Here in Sheboygan, I had got friends with a large CEO of a manufacturing company in, in Sheboygan that does not exist. He wrote a book, and in with that, he made this statement. A person is three people. The person you think you are, the person everybody else thinks you are, and the person that you really are in the eyes of God. That last person, someday before my time is up, I may yet get to be. It is by the grace of God that we are saved. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I Milt, once was lost, but now I'm found. Milt, would you like the extra minute? I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I'll be done. done in a minute. I'll go ahead. Can and we take the a roll call vote? We don't need that. Go ahead. Okay. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. We need to communicate more effectively among ourselves, face to face, not behind closed doors and in secret places. Just mention my name in Cheboygan. It's Melton Storm. It's the greatest little town in the world. Thank you, Milton. That is it. I want to thank all the citizens who addressed the council tonight. Your input is valuable to us. And Ms. Schnoor just wanted to point out that we are looking into that situation there. It's not falling on deaf ears. It just works a little slow, but uh, we are working on it. Next item on the agenda, notice a notice of hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of the East West Alley between North 7th Street and North 8th Street and between Ontario Avenue and Niagara Avenue. We also have a hearing for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in Niagara Avenue from North 4th to North 5th. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council with respect to any of those hearings? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Next item is consent agenda 8 1 through 8 20. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There will be a none. Please call the roll. Oh, excuse me. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, not for separate vote, but uh, just discussion on number 8-9, uh, referral from public protection and safety regarding the intersection of Weeding Creek Road and OK. Um, the discussion came across within public works of a, uh, a design that Ryan Sasma had found for a um, solar-powered flashing yellow light that we can uh, highlight either the speed or the fact there's an intersection coming up ahead. Uh, the cost is, is relatively minimal, surprisingly, on these, and they're reusable. So at the time that the intersection is redone, we can reuse these items somewhere else. Um, chairman of the Committee uh, of Silas Vanderweel and I will work on a letter to the county, uh, one, because it is their land that we're putting that, uh, the, we would like to put that lights put on there. And quite frankly, it, it doesn't do enough. The intersection needs to be done, and needs to be done quickly. Uh, and we'd ask that the county, um, when they receive this letter, take it seriously. Uh, allow us to put the signs there and, quite frankly, assist us in 
in putting those up there. Uh, and by that, I mean paying the bill with us so that it's spread out through all the county taxpayers. In addition, take a look at that intersection. I think while it highlights the dangerous inter intersection, it does nothing for the real problem, which is the northbound. Uh, when you're going northbound on OK, it's taking a uh, right on east, Weeding Creek, there's a churn lane there that people often use as a passing lane uh, to get around people who are trying to go west. And that's the problem right there. That's where the intersection the problem really happens. So I urge the county and say for to take a very serious look at this. We are not done with this by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I will not be satisfied until something is done to save lives at this intersection. Thank, thank you, Alderman Rinsflash. <coughs> Anybody else? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question of uh, Older person Vanderweel on 8-8, uh, the by public protection safety recommending uh, communication be placed on file to draft the proper ordinance. Uh, is Sergeant Tusinchi aware of what the proper ordinance uh, intent is by the committee? I, I just, uh, the only knowledge I have of this is just reading the committee's report here, and it's not really clear what the, the intent is as far as uh, the committee's wishes on uh, the proper ordinance to be drawn. Former Manuel? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in that area, we're extending the, uh, the no parking area, uh, no parking zone, and I'll get with uh, Sergeant Tazinski and and, uh, okay. and bring something to council with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderbilt, uh, Madam City Clerk. Um, <clears throat> just to answer Attorney McLean, if you look, I believe this is the ordinance that belongs with that at 8-50. Sergeant Tuzinski did provide me with very detail to create the ordinance, so that's what we did. So I think we're okay. Okay. Alderman Rainflash? Yeah, she covered my point, thank you. Pardon me? She covered my point, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? There being none, let's call the roll. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Verhasselt? And Wangaman? 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 821 through 825 to be referred. Alderman Montemayor, you went first. Thank you, Your Honor. On communication number 823 from Mr. Mattia, I move to file. Second. And at the same time, I want to challenge the state and the federal legislators to deal with this issue. We need some national uniformity. Thank you, Alvin Montemayor. And I believe President Hanna second? Yes. Second. There's a motion and a second to file 823 under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Moving on. Report of Officers 2, 826, lies over to August 20th. To be referred, 827 through 836. Resolutions introduced three. Are we okay with the pace? Mm -hmm. 837 by Alderman Hanna, authorizing the redemption of $3,580,000 general obligation refunding bonds dated March 1st, 1995. President Hanna. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 837 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 838 by Alderman Hanna requesting the County of Sheboygan to combine its communication center with the City of Sheboygan and that the combined communication center be located in the City of Sheboygan's new police station. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at first, I need to make a motion to suspend. Is there a second to that? Second. Any objections? There being none, please proceed. I would like to the hold rest. On. We got Alderman Wangman. Uh, may I ask the reason for the suspension of the rules, please? President Hanna. You certainly can. I am looking forward to, to moving this ahead to the county as soon as possible because we're about to begin construction on our police station. Thank you, President Hanna. 
Did you make a motion to motion to pass? I would like to make a motion that the resolution to be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 838 upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. I just had a question about um, who would be negotiating, uh, what groups would be negotiating on this arrangement? Alderman, uh, Alderman Vanderbilt. Um, I don't know that answer. I was going to make a different Okay. Do you still want to speak? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'm speaking about the resolution. Uh, as a member of the Shared Service Committee, I always look at, try to look at things with an open mind. Shared dispatch was no different. I believe that a consolidated dispatch can work when done the right way. The Shared Service Committee and the subcommittee charged with looking into this matter have done a great job. They have taken the time to look at all aspects of a combined dispatch center and have asked other counties for their opinions. After listening to several counties that came and gave the Shared Service Committee a presentation, the majority of them expressed that doing it right the first time is essential. I believe that in order for this to be successful, we need to build a combined dispatch center on a neutral site. Building the center next to the new police station would be doing, doing it the wrong way. David Sleater from Rock County pointed out in his presentation that perception can be reality. In other words, if the dispatch center is built next to the Sheboygan Police Department, it will give the perception that the Sheboygan Police are dominating the center. Once the perception is established, it can be almost impossible to overcome it. If the city and county are not willing to commit the necessary funds in order to combine dispatch the right way, then we shouldn't do it at all. Because in the end, we will spend money fixing what we have failed to fund properly in the first place. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manuel. Alderman Clayunas, I believe that the appropriate body to negotiate that would be the City County Shared Services Committee members. And if at some point they decide they need to come back to the council for guidance, they could do that. Would you prefer, or would you feel better if that was in, um, included in the? Well, uh, yeah, I think um, what concerns me is what was brought up uh, last council meeting is that um, how are we going to be sharing equitably as much as possible and the cost of this since it's going to be attached to a building that we're, if we go through with this, attached to a building that we're already building, uh, will we be paying for it twice uh, was one question. And the other thing is the perception you know, is this the Sheboygan Police Department's uh, uh, f f um, department, or you know, it's if this batch is done by the police department, will the county in some way, you know, have some resentment or some feelings as if it's not equal? I just I have some hesitation, like Alderman Van der Real has, about how it's going to be perceived, and um, the negotiations have to be really open and fair for the city of Sheboygan also to support it. I think in a way that's going to make it so that it's everybody's and not just <coughs> ours twice. Excellent point, Alderman Cleunas. Alderman Wangerman, you're next, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I listened to the presentation we received on the combination of the two uh, units, and for the life of me, I can't see the advantage to it. I have a bit of advantage over everybody in this room in that I worked in that room many, many hours myself. In the past, the uh, officers used to work in that room. I talked to some of the communications operators, and they have a great deal of reservation. There's a lot of unanswered questions here yet. And I'm afraid that uh, we're trying to fix something that's not broke again. We have a system that's functioning fairly well. There's very few problems down there. Uh, perhaps they're a little bit crowded. They're a little bit crowded at the sheriff's department. But we're taking two units and trying to put them together and Mr. Maples had said there's very little difference between city and county policing. Well, that's totally wrong. The difference is enormous. Uh, you'd have a great deal of difficulty taking city police officers and putting them to work in the county and vice versa. And the same thing stands true for the communication center. There's a great deal of dispatch difficulties. He, uh, the thing that bothered me the most was the great oversimplification that he made, that this was all going to be terribly easy, that everything was going to go one, two, three, and it was going to work. It hasn't in other areas. As uh, Lieutenant Reinfeld pointed out, we can look at perhaps a span of 10 years where it takes for all these things to meld together. And do we really need to do this? Even the report that we received said there was very little possibility that it was going to be a money-saving venture. So then why are we doing it? This is a difficult, difficult procedure to do. Uh, 
The uh, dispatch priorities for the county are different than the city. We have something like uh, 20 some or 20, maybe it's 25 different fire departments out there that have to be brought together and have to be have the same protocol for dispatching. We have uh, Mr. Maple said it was only two uh, entities that we had to consider. Well, we have Sheboygan, we have Sheboygan Falls, we have Plymouth, we have Kohler, and they do some dispatching themselves on occasion, and they have their own radio systems. We have to bring this all together, so I see nothing but problems involved in this. And if somebody could tell me where, why we should do this, will it save us money? Will it give us an advantage? Uh, will it improve performance? Uh, and as Alderman Vanderwill said, if we can't do it right, let's not do it. You know, let's let's not uh, fix something that's not broke. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangman. Next, Lincoln, we have Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, back to the, uh, the speaker, uh, Alderman Clayunas, the issue did come up. Um, I thought a lot about what shared services meant, means to me. And when we're looking at cost savings, we're all a little bit surprised that actually we need to hire additional people uh, to have good backup on this one. We're not actually saving any employment costs. So what, how does the shared services in this aspect really cover? To me, it's going to be the cost. If the county is looking at ways that they can save money, um, we can work with them. Uh, but the county government, which has all the county taxpayers included in that, uh, should be, in my mind, the paying body for this. We pay our county taxes, too, we're of that, but it would be just as equal for us city residents as it would be for the county residents. I think that's the ideal of shared services. Everyone pays their fair share. So I'd, I would be interested, and um, if someone would second that, I'd make a motion to amend the, re the resolution and add um, um, with understanding that um, negotiation should be based upon the county paying for the hard cost in addition to uh, all of the personnel cost. Spread across. So we're spreading across the, ta the taxpayers. There's a motion to amend and second to catch the amendment. Uh, go ahead again. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess take the, uh, the period off of possible, make that mm -hmm. a comma, and then with the understanding mm -hmm. that is our intent to have the county pay for all of the construction costs as well as employment 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 costs human resource costs spread through spread across the county the entire right. county entirely that okay. way each taxpayer this is not in the language but each taxpayer is only paying once thank you Alderman Renfleisch on the amendment only there are some lights blinking from the original motion we're going to entertain discussion or debate on the amendment only is there, is there anyone that would like to do that otherwise uh, we'll call the vote could I just ask who seconded that was that Alderman Hanna yeah. President Hanna. Okay. This is on the amendment. Hanna. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. No. Bourne. Aye. And Serta. Aye. Twelve ayes, one no. Motion carries. On the, on the, uh, Motion is amended. I need a motion to pass as amended. Somebody want to make that? I would make a motion to pass it as amended. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion on the motion as amended, we have Alderman Ryan first, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, shared services is something that we've been, it's kind of been an elusive concept for many years uh, between the city and the county. And, and this is one thing that at least we may be getting close on. I think it, it deserves further exploration. I think it needs to go to the county to let them kick it around. Uh, the city's done a lot of work on it. City County Shared Services have done a lot of work on it. I think it now needs to go to the county board. And, le and, and let's get the county board's true opinion on shared services and what they mean for the city and what they mean for the county. Uh, by no means does this mean that this council all of a sudden has said this is, you know, We'll leave it up to the county and we're going to agree with that. Of course, everything comes back to the council for approval. It's just I would like to, uh, and, you know, see what the county does with this. So therefore, I, I, you know, I think this is a good idea. It's a good start. Uh, if it is something that indeed is spread across all taxpayers countywide instead of just uh, uh, city taxpayers, it could be a great thing. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> 
I have a little bit of trepidation with just sending this over with, you know, recommending the city police station, the new city police station. However, the report shows that it's the most economic, economically feasible. So I, I kind of lean that way, but I hope that it's also open for discussion to possibly having a separate, a separate department as they do in Janesville. But the thing we have to remember about Rock County, and I saw that communication center last year, is that they had to bring together about 20 municipalities rather than just the city of Sheboygan and the county. And yes, we do have a little, uh, a little bit in the outlying areas, but our, I don't believe ours is nearly the obstacles to overcome that they did down in Rock County. But I also think that the possibility of adding on that 800 square foot over at the Sheriff's Department is also a possibility. So I would like to see negotiation, that it, not that it's absolutely carved in stone that it has to be in the police department, but I, but I lean that way because the report shows that it is the most economically feasible. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I'd like to mention that I, I commend the Alder Person to Ryan Flesch's um, amendment. Um, I think we just have to be careful that we're not approving a concept. Because given that this council has been um, told that we're biz business minded, I would like to see a more concrete proposal. I, I see one here sitting on my desk. Something that's outlined far too often, we're approving concepts, things that sound good, and, but I'm looking at more of the mechanics, the feasibilities. One of the things mentioned tonight was the staffing. Taking a look at this proposal, um, it talks about, and far too often our departments are, are charged with being too top heavy. But yet the proposal outlines this, increasing now more supervisors that right now currently both the county and Sheboygan have none. Uh, my biggest concern has always been if we're asking the staff, the employees, to take on more than they can chew. chew. And, and we live in this, in this age where we're always, as employees, being asked to do far more um, than what we're capable of doing because we're downsizing constantly. But is this an area where we want to compromise that? We're talking about lifelines. These, these dispatchers, are, they're a lifeline, not only to the officers, but this is citizens. So I'm not saying that I don't support the concept. I think it, it's something that we can explore. But I think we can do better as a council. I think what we could do is put our best foot forward to the county. Let's, let's look professional. Let's itemize these things. Let's really put this out there and maybe submit a proposal to them to get their opinion. Right now, this document, it's not saying that. It's an all or nothing again. So I'm only voting against it again because of, I would think, just like when you purchase a home, you have a good faith estimate. Everything's itemized. And I think that's what we can present to the county. So I approve in terms of the concept, exploring it, but I'm not going to support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think Alderman Ryan said it very well that this should go to the county and let them look at it, talk about it, and the shared service committee and the subcommittee are there to talk about it, and they have numbers, and I think it's not for us to decide tonight whether to do this or not. I think it's for us to decide if we want the county to look at our proposal. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Greenflesh? Thank you. My last points on this would be, I agree with Alderman Montemayor. Um, it, to me, it's almost a test case. You know, we hear a lot about the county wanting to share services with us and wanting to work with us, and we, we seem to make overtures to this, and then we don't get anything. Uh, the prime example is the fact that the city had to buy county land for the police station, land that we as taxpayers already own. I've, brought, I've talked about this before, and I'll you know, bring it up again. And I know the understanding is, well, we're only a portion of the county, but it's land they weren't using anyway, but yet we had to buy it. If they want to use our police station, which we bought for dispatch, I say that's fine. We'll sell that area to them for the cost that we had to buy the land from them in the first place. And I think that's a good start um, to, to, to see how serious they are about working with this. But at least if we're looking at spreading these costs over every taxpayer, that tells me that they are serious. Uh, if, if they don't come back with that conclusion, then I see clearly they want to keep riding the backs of the Sheboygan taxpayers one more time. Good point. There you are concept of shared service has been around for many, many years, as all of you uh, are aware of. Uh, but in my mind, and I think Alderman, one way or another, have expressed the same sentiment, and that is that shared service is, is two-pronged, sharing the service and sharing the cost. I've always joked that I'll gladly share anything with anybody if I don't have to pick up the tab for it. 
And, and this is what we have to be very careful. And as Alderman Kleinuda said, which was an excellent point, is we have to be careful when we talk about the county part and the city part because the county already levies $13.5 million off our backs. In addition to that, they levy off the other villages, towns, and cities. And they do that based on their population, et cetera. So they, they collect, they levy $44 million off all of us. So we're all lump sum. So for us to come back and say, now we're going to pay another portion, that's not right. I mean, you're not, you're not at the same field. So the, the points that are being made are excellent. Alderman uh, Sarita makes a good point, too, about the concept versus a package. And I think that's what's, where it's going. It's going to city, county, shared services so they could put the package together, send it to us, send it to the county board, and say, is this where you want to go? And I think that would be the next excellent step to take. But I, I think you made a great point there is we need to be careful that we distinguish and be mindful of a concept versus a proposal or a package in its entirety. Anything else? On the motion as amended, 838. Please call the roll. Heideman. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Wongeman. No. Boren. Aye. Serta. No. Hannah. Aye. Ten eyes, three no's. Motion carries. 839, we are going to hold for num 848. Please make that notation. 8.40, we will hold for 8.47. Please make that notation. 8.41 and 42 lies over. 8.43 and 44 to be referred. Report of Committee 5, 8.45 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 8.46. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to file that document. Second. Motion and second to file 846. That issue has been dealt with before. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of committees 7, 847 by the Marina and Harbor Committee recommending approval of the agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Skipper Marine Development Incorporated for management and operation of South Pier Seawall dockage. And we will take that plus 840. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think first I need to make a motion to suspend. Second. Motion to second suspend. Is there any objection? Objection? Uh, before I object, I would like to know information on why we're asking for suspension. There's a timing issue. I think we need to, that contract needs to be in place by the end of July. Has this gone through finance yet? No. No. Okay. I, I will object then and ask to be referred to finance. There's an objection, although there was a motion and a second, so we need to call the roll. On the objection, Alderman Ryan? I, I too have a question, Your Honor. Um, having to settle this out by the end of July, I, I take it we are expecting some large yachts coming in. No, it's a contract. It's, a contract. it's simply on the contract for Skipper Buds. Right. So it's, it's not like we would be turning away any business if, it, if we did not spend the rules. Thank you. Attorney um, McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Just as, as a comment, it's a, a contract for voting season 2007. So the longer we go into 2007, uh, you know, the less impact it's really going to have. Uh, uh, it's Skipper Bud currently, at least verbally, has been told that if some large boat is looking at coming in to tie up along the seawall, that uh, they should contact Skipper Bud, and Skipper Bud will work with them because they've got the marine radios and so forth. Uh, so you should be aware of that. That's I don't know that any boats have come in that have tied along the seawall, but uh, that's what we've told Skipper uh, Marine, at least informally, until the contract is acted on by the council one way or another. But, uh, you know, it's not absolutely essential that you enter into it tonight versus next council meeting. But uh, as I say, it is just for this boating season. So if you don't act on it till October, it's going to be uh, irrelevant. Okay. 
Anything else? On the motion to suspend, and we need 12 votes. Um, no? And I need to know who seconded to suspend. Um, uh, Vice President Bourne. No, I didn't. No? Who's, who's, oh, who's second on the... I just need the second on the suspension. Yes. Alderman Meyer, second. Sorry about that. And the suspension, we would need this okay. 11. Okay. Uh, okay, this is to suspend. An I vote would be to suspend. Kittleson? Aye. Clay No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Nine eyes, four no's. Motion fails. So we will refer that if no one has any objections to finance. Both of the documents. Both documents. The RC on the rose. Be 847 and 840. Any objections referring to finance? There is none. We'll move on. 848 by Public Works recommending entering into contract with Great Lakes TV Seal Incorporated for cleaning of the sanitary sewer on Broughton Drive, which is partially filled with sand and debris. Alderman Meyer. And okay. we're taking 848 and 839. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the <clears throat> RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, where does this money come from? Is this something that's in the budget for regular expenses that we have to incur? It's nothing unusual? Okay, thank you. Thank you. There being no more discussion, please call the rule. Meyer? Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Serta, Hannah, Heidemann, Kittleson, and Clayunas. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. 849 to be referred, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to suspend the rules on this one. Motion second. Any objection? There is none. Please proceed. Alderman Rinkleis. I'm sorry to do this again, but I guess what is the, uh, the uh, reason for suspension? Well, I'd like to move in it to accept and adopt so that the individual committees can start to work on the itemized suggestions. Thank you. And the uh, resolution would actually be to refer various items to various committees. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And we're not actually approving the, res the, the ideas yet? No. Okay. I have no objection. Objection? Then I need a motion. Oh, sorry, hold on. Sorry. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to add an amendment, uh, one more bullet point that I intended on doing in committee that I that had slipped my mind. Is it appropriate time to do that now or later? Sure. Uh, we don't amend report of committees. No, report of committees are not amendable. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren, Vice President Boren. Anything else on that? Otherwise, I need a motion to... Uh, to accept and adopt report of committee. President Mayor, Hayden. I would make a motion to accept and adopt the report. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. Thirteen eyes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 850, and 850, 850, 51, and 52. Lies over. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. President Hannah. Eight, uh, 852. 852. Can I uh, suspend the rules on 852? Second. Mo motion second. Any objection? Objection. Objection. We will take a vote on that. Any discussion on suspension of... 852. Please call the roll. Hold on, please. Hold on, Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Because this has been such a contentious issue, and I have supported this issue, um, and I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm giving favorites here, is there a reason why we have to approve it tonight? Is there a timing issue? Pre President Hannah. Thank you very much. Uh, the issue here is that the, the chief uh, and the Fire and Police Commission, I think we need to give them clear direction. There was confusion on the 
um, the job descriptions, and I think this clears that language up. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Rahassel. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could ask uh, Chief Lestusky just to step up for a second. I had a question of him on this. Because Chief this Lestusky, was in salary increases here a few weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor, members of the council. Just to clarify on, on this document 852, you've seen it, I imagine. Familiar with it. But we're basically asking to add firefighter paramedic and to change firefighter. Are we continuing to hold on to a firefighter only position, job description? Um, what we are looking at doing is creating a job description for people who are acting in the position of firefighter paramedic. It's not unlike other job descriptions that we have right now. Um, the table of organization change that we're looking at is changing the, the TO of firefighters from 51 to 54. That reflects what was uh, voted on at the committee meeting uh, when the ambulance proposal was passed. Um, and then there was a fourth position that is a current position that's vacant that was one of those four positions that was passed. Right now of those 51 positions, there's actually three job descriptions that fall under the scope of firefighter. Uh, one is firefighter, one is fire equipment operator, and one is lead firefighter. And depending on which position you're in and what position you're assigned to, that's the job description that fits you. And that would be a similar um, circumstance with this firefighter paramedic position. When someone's working in a position where those qualifications are necessary, that would be their job description. Okay, well, but I guess my question is, we'll continue to have a firefighter only job description and job code. At, at this time, yes. For those individuals who either aren't interested or aren't qualified to be a firefighter slash paramedic. That's correct. Okay. And could you just, and my concern is, and uh, we've talked about this in committee and I've talked to you on the side, uh, my concern is if we had the entire force someday convert to that firefighter paramedic, that would automatically put an undue burden on the taxpayer at the same time, maybe not necessarily needing 54 paramedic-ready individuals. Um, so I guess my question on that is, do you have a, a vision as to how many people you would see under each code, job code, in the future, five years from now, as things as the dust settles on this? Um, those, those numbers could vary depending on the scope of what we're doing as far as uh, you know, doing private transports, doing city 911, doing areas outside the city. Um, the way a lot of other cities address this, and there's different ways of doing it, and it's really council and, and administrative driven, is you can identify the amount of paramedics that you deem appropriate um, at any given time and say we're going to compensate this amount. And some of this is negotiated. Um, some of it is by, by uh, you know, resolution, uh, chief's discretion, and then you can determine if, as a chief, if I want those people or I'm going to require those people to maintain their licensure that no longer ride on, on the ambulances. And some cities, based on the, the cost factor, think it's a good deal to have all their people trained to that level, and it's a benefit to the community. It gives great flexibility in how they staff and how they respond to emergencies. And that's something uh, like a city like Oshkosh has really um, transformed from an ambulance service like we're starting now to a full department of paramedics. There's other cities that say um, we're only going to designate 18 personnel or 24 personnel to, to this and we're not going to require anybody else to have licensure beyond that. And we can make that determination. We're looking at approximately um, six personnel per shift plus plus, um, uh, you know, backup for, for vacations and all those other staffing issues that come up. Um, we're not at a point yet where we're even nearly close to that, but I would think that we want to we want to bring in firefighter paramedics because that's the, the standard that's out there now. That's uh, what, what's uh, appropriate for the fire service. And if we want to make adjustments on the back end as far as how many licensures we want people to hold in that, we would do that. Um, question? No, uh, based on everything that you and this is something you've been working on for years and years and years and it just got past here this spring summer but based on what you know looking at the city proper ruling out ticking on any other ambulance service outside the city where would you put that number I mean, we've talked 1819 is the mathematical number that you need to cover 
Right? What would you need of those 54? Would, and I'm not holding you to a number, but I'm just trying to get my head around. Is that number 30, 40, 45, rough, roughly speaking? I, I could say that you know, in order to run the service as, um, as we proposed it, you know, we can run it with 24, or, you know, half of our firefighting force, roughly. Um, but I don't know that there's an advantage necessarily to do that. There's there's some benefit in maintaining people at licensure, and we have to weigh the, the the cost factor as far as keeping people on and keeping them licensed and having having uh, um, people paid up front to do that. And we're going to be looking at that as far as our negotiated aspect of this, and and we'll be very sensitive to that. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chief, it seems to me, you know, if you have the majority of your staff that is that is licensed para, as as firefighter paramedics, um, if you have somebody that is a licensed firefighter paramedic, and they are uh, they are, are are on shift as a operator and not operating in the capacity of the, of a paramedic, uh, what is the department's intentions as far as I know? It probably has to be worked out with. The union, et cetera, et cetera. Is it possible to pay that person even though they are licensed as a firefighter paramedic as an operator at that point? Are there two different pay scales or is it based upon simply the license? It, it can be based on whatever we determine it is through negotiations, but what some people do is they pay for the seat. That is, if somebody is riding the ambulance, they keep, get paid a certain amount and they would get paid a lesser amount if we choose to do that. To maintain licensure, you know, it's all over the map as far as every city does it a little bit different. But uh, obviously, um, there's a benefit for people maintaining their licensure for the city. It gives us flexibility. It'll be uh, allow us to have more depth in the system in the future. It allows you to cover more calls and backup calls without utilizing utilizing overtime and that to bring in paramedics. So it gives you more flexibility, have more licensed people, and if you if you can arrange a system where where you're paying them to be in the seat or when they're acting in those positions, that's the most efficient. That, that was going to be my point. It seems to be you know it seems to make a lot more sense to have more licensed people rather than to run into a situation where you don't have enough licensed people and you're paying overtime because you only have X amount of people licensed. To Absolutely. Those. Thank you. And if I could add, um, one of the reasons for suspension that, that we're asking for, um, and Attorney McLean and um, President Hanna are aware of this, is the Police and Fire Commission um, is looking for that clear direction so we can move process with the, uh, forward with the hiring process. It's a very lengthy process, time consuming, and there's a lot of steps in it, and they're at a point where they don't want to move forward with it um, because there was some, they believe, some ambiguity between um, what was the wording of the um, resolution and, and what our intent was. So this would clarify that and allow that process to move forward. Thank you. Oh, Vice President Borden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, you had mentioned something just a little earlier that you said you were going to be able to get by with six per shift. Uh, I thought we were going to be st uh, staffing three ambulances 24/7. So how that wouldn't that be uh, nine per sh uh, that would be uh, yeah three ambulances six 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 and then 18 per day is that correct? No, six per per shift. Six per shift times That's three times three times shifts three. that would be 18. No, our shifts are 24-hour shifts. Oh, okay, 24-hour shifts. Okay, the other the other concern I have is that. According to the, the document here, it says that the, the fire the, the fire chief with uh, the fire chief will have a discretion uh, in filling these positions. Uh, is this usurping some of the authority of the fire and, uh, the fire and police commission? I guess that would be a, a question for Attorney McLean. Um, the way I would read it, Alderman uh, Warren, is that the. Uh, the council sets the table of organization. What this is saying is within the chief's prerogative as to whether firefighter or fire, firefighter paramedic that you could uh, hire one or the other. You know, within that set uh, limit by the council. But uh, no, that's uh, the 
the Police and Fire Commission uh, does the hiring, the new hiring, but they don't establish uh, what the positions are to be filled. That's the council's position. You create the table of organization as to what the jobs are. They do the process to take the politics out of the hiring process. That's the concept. Okay, and then uh, another question. Uh, uh, you were also mentioning that some of this has yet to be negotiated. Uh, shouldn't some of this have been negotiated ahead of time? Because now, if it's subject to negotiation, we really don't know how all of these people are going to be end up being paid. Uh, you know, are, are they on the ambulance? Are they a firefighter? Is this is yet to be negotiated. We really don't know what the true costs are going to be. Um, initially, we, we laid out a, a framework of, of what could be expected. Um, based on the fact that uh, um, we did not, not want to lock the city into a negotiated position by resolution, we did not specifically identify that what that was, although we did get an agreement from, or at least a verbal agreement from, from the local um, that they were going to work and, and work with us in an appropriate way. And uh, I believe that will happen. I believe the council will see that. And um, um, like I said, there were good reasons why that wasn't specifically identified in the, the proposal because it does compromise our negotiating position if, if you identify a certain number uh, in advance of negotiations. And that was uh, um, recommended to me from human resources and, and other sources here. Yeah, I would like to see I would like to see uh, the the fire department broken down in two ways, and that is whatever the number is, whether it's 18 or if you need 24 uh, paramedics slash firefighters, I would like to see that distinct from the number from the from the number of firefighters. Uh, you know, I, I really don't see the value, and over a period of time, through through hiring attrition, whatever the case may be, that eventually, if you've got 54 or 55 staff members, and they're all uh, 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 paramedic slash firefighters uh, when it comes up for new, ne new negotiations this is going to end up costing the taxpayers a lot more money than having two separate uh, categories of firemen, paramedic uh, or just firefighters so uh, just the way this is right now I can't support it because I feel in the future it's going to be a huge huge burden on the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you Vice President Boren. Chief thank you very much. Hold on. No? Thank you, Chief. Alma Kleinus. Thank you, Your Honor. I just had a question about the job description that was listed here. Um, is this a job description that will be retroactive to those who are presently firefighters and paramedics, trained firefighters and paramedics? Maybe, I guess maybe I should have asked. Alderman Verhassel, your chair. I'm sorry. Will this be something that, a, in other words, a person who's a, fi a fireman and paramedic right now He'll be handed this new job description and said, "This is your new job description. Sign it." Only, I'm sorry, only if they meet the qualifications, okay. or if they're asked to meet the qualifications and certifications by Chief Kostuski. Okay. okay, and this would also be the new job description for a new hire. Correct. Okay, because on um, the third page of it, on the top, I have a little bit of question about, and this has always been my issue with this whole thing. Number 19, will complete and maintain appropriate minimum certification and licensure as necessary for assigned position. Will complete. In other words, they may not even have it at the time, um, the, you know, the, the correct qualifications or certifications um, at the time they sign this. So, uh, again, we're putting people and saying, you know, you can have a job, just get qualified later um, for it. I, you know, I think if you hire a person, they should have the qualifications before they get the job. Thank you, Alderman Clayness. Alderman Ryan. Thank you once again, Mr. Mayor. Um, this whole issue is rather contentious, and, and you know, um, for the record, I did vote against the ambulance issue just because I did not have the support of my constituents. However, as a council, it was passed. We passed it as a council that the fire department will be taking over the ambulance service. Uh, now time is of the essence. Um, in order for this process to be completed by the end of the year, that the chief and his department aren't starting out behind the eight ball, I think we have to expedite the process, uh, suspend the rules this evening, and uh, let the chief do his job. 
I think it's uh, that time as a council, if we continue to put up stumbling blocks, um, obviously there's a certain level of trust in the chief and his department to do the right thing, or this council would not have given it the, the, the ambulance responsibility to them in the first place. If we continue to put up stumbling blocks, uh, they're not going to be able to get the job done. We told them they can do the job. Now we have to do everything in our power to let them do it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Brassel, third time. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question for Attorney McLean. Uh, just a point of clarification on this. We're, we're basically allowing Fire Chief Lestowski the latitude to, to put the people in the positions as he sees fit with this document. But that does not stop a future council, whether it's next week, next year, or 10 years from now, to stop being in and imposing numbers on each category, does it? No, that's correct, Alderman Brassel. Uh, you, you established the table of organization and the items within that table of organization. Yes, my point is, and I'm comfortable that Chief Listusky has, has taken this to heart and that he understands my concerns and some of the concerns of the taxpayers. So I guess my thought is that let's watch this thing evolve and at that time the council can step in and if they see that number's getting out of control from a cost standpoint, we can then step in and impose those numbers. Thank you, Alderman Hessel. We have one more. Alderman Weinman. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I have just one question. I don't know who can answer this for me, but uh, we talk constantly about the shortage of time that's involved here. In other words, January 30, I mean, December 31st is the cutoff. Does that mean that if the fire department isn't up and running by December 31st, that Orange Cross couldn't continue to operate? Is there really, really a time constraint here? What would happen if, if they weren't up and ready and their contract expires? Is there any rule that says they can't operate without a contract, just as we are before? Orange Cross can continue to operate, and anybody else can continue to operate. So is there, is there really a, a, a tremendous time constraint here? That, there we, is, that we must get this done by January, I mean December 31st? Equity. What would happen if we didn't? I well, guess that's my question. I can't say into the future. <laughs> uh, Turn plane. My only comment, uh, Alderman Wagman, would be that uh, while Orange Cross apparently would still be here, we would not have a contract with them, so they would not have any contractual obligation to meet the standards that are in that contract, which talks about uh, you know three-minute response time and uh, you know those sorts of performance standards. So many ambulances within the city, uh, unless you negotiated something with them as an extension of that agreement, they'd be free to. Uh, uh, respond in any manner that they chose. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I believe if we're not ready by the time that we said we would, the only thing that would suffer would be the integrity of this council that the majority voted to go with the ambulance and also the integrity of the fire department because I believe that they'll do the best they can to be ready for when they can be. But as Alderman Ryan said, if we continue to put up stumbling blocks, it's not going to benefit anybody. Thank you. Thank you. I would just ask the council to, to keep an open mind. Uh, as Alderman Ryan has said, the council did approve it. Uh, in, my, in my humble opinion, it's time to move on. We can continue to scrutinize it. We can continue to keep a close eye on it. Uh, those issues that will come about can be revisited. But right now, we're in a position where we need to follow through and move on. Uh, it's just, just that time. And I would ask the alderman to, to please be mindful of that. We have a motion to suspend, correct? Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangerman? No. Boren? No. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Nine eyes, four no's. Motion fails. That will lie over. Matters laid over 11 631 RO number 1680708 by City Plan Commission recommending vacating the east west alley located within block 105 of the original plat of the city of Sheboygan located between North 7th and North 8th and between Ontario and Niagara Avenue. Alderman Montemayor. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I move the RO be accepted and filed and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 744, resolution number 540708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that we take 744, 45, and 48 together. Please do. Need I, a motion? I would move that the resolutions be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 44, 45, and 48 upon their passage under discussion. There being none, please call. I'm sorry, hold on. Alderman Ray Fleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd ask on 744, uh, just an explanation from Finance Committee regarding um, why the transfer is coming out of the contingency fund and going into the salaries for the various departments at this time of year. Mr. Kephart, just ask me. I'll call. I'll call the department heads. While well, he's getting up here, Alderman Hanna, did you want to take 44, 45, 47, and 48, or are you leaving 47 no, out? 47. Okay. Rich, we have a question for you. Who had a question for Rich? Alderman Renfleisch, would you please rephrase the question? Sure. Um, just looking at 744, transferring from general fund contingency to various um, departments' salaries. Uh, seem to be smaller amounts. Is this something that's a tie over? Are we over budget or where do these amounts come from? This was part of the uh, budget when it was passed in November that there was a salary trust contingency uh, that was established by the council and it uh, with the, was known at that point that there'd be you know future labor contract settlements and we didn't know what amount would be in each one of the departments. So a central account is established. Uh, with appropriations and then it's allocated after the contracts are approved. So we're at that point now to make that transfer. Okay. So basically just a follow up, this this is actually then to pay for raises that were negotiated in previous contracts? Yeah, so the, for the 07 budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Flash. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like a separate vote on 745, please. Okay, we will take 744 and 48. Is that okay with uh, yes. President Hanna? Thank you very much. So there's a 744 and 48. There's a motion to put resolutions upon their passage. Any more discussion on 44 and 48? There is none. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 745 resolution, resolution number 550708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, rescinding resolution number 140708 and authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Verhasselt? Excuse me? No. Thank you. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Nine eyes, four no's. Motion carries. 747, resolution number 560708. It doesn't carry. That, that, that didn't this is a transfer resolution. It needs a oh, two-thirds. Oh, two-thirds. Okay, sorry about that. It's a transfer, so the motion fails. 745 fails. 747, resolution number 560708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, rescinding resolution number 230407 and authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget for the paving projects. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I would like to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 757, General Ordinance Number 190708 by Alderman Vanderweel to add stop signs for the east and west traffic on Walrath Boulevard at the intersection of Walrath and North 4th Street. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 757 upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Serta. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleonis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Verhasselt. And Wangaman. 13 ayes. Motion carries. We will do other matters first and then we will move into closed session. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 8-53 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That goes to law and licensing. And 8-54 is a committee report by the Motor Vehicle Review Committee um, reporting back to the Council on the potential use of some portion of the Motor Vehicle Fund and making various recommendations. That goes to Finance and Committee of the Whole. Now I need a motion, uh, President Hanna. Please read it off your agenda. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided under Section 19.851J Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of conferring with the city attorney who is rendering oral advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the council with respect to litigation in Poole versus the city of Sheboygan. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleonis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. We will go into closed session. After closed session, we will come back into open session, but they will end the meeting. I'd ask the, all the public to please step out. Only the alderman may be present. And Attorney McLean and City Clerk.